Hi, and thank you for joining the ARC of Fort Bend County Parent and Education and Support Group meeting on Zoom today. We meet the second Thursday each month throughout the school year, and our presentation is at 11 a.m. Then at noon, those who'd like to stick around for the support group can bounce question and ideas off of one another as we lend each other support and encouragement. My name is Carrie Axtell, and I am the Advocacy and Youth Programs Director here at the ARC of Fort Bend County. We're a nonprofit organization. We were established in 1968 for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And we ensure opportunities for people with IDD and their families to maximize their quality of life within our community. We do that through disability rights advocacy for and with people with IDD. And we provide information about community services and resources. We organize resource fairs, support groups for parents and adult siblings. And we also hold several high quality social and recreational programs for people in their teens, 20s, and into mature adulthood. We are also home to the largest Special Olympics delegation for adults in the region, offering 10 different sports and over 100 athletes. If you'd like to learn more about the Arc of Fort Bend County, you can visit our website at arcoffortbend.org and um, also like our Facebook page, which is active and up to date. And you can also reach out to me. I put my contact information there in the chat box. That when you logged on, you may have noticed that your microphone's on mute just to help cut down on background noise and help us hear our presenter better. Um, if you can please remain on mute throughout the presentation until um, at the very end. If move on, if you have questions for our presenter, you can ask them then. But I also encourage you to use the chat box. In the meantime, if you think of a question, type it in the chat box and I'll have those to read for her again at the end of the presentation. But um, we do appreciate your questions because we learn a lot from them. If this is your first time joining us, we welcome you. You're in for a treat because there's some exceptional professionals here in the community who share their knowledge and expertise with us. This month, we're very pleased to welcome our presenter, Bhuvana Ramalingam. Bhuvana practices transcendental meditation as part of living an Ayurvedic life. She is pursuing her master's degree in Ayurveda and integrative medicine from the Maharishi International University. She's an active student member of the National Ayurvedic Medic and Medical Association and the Texas Ayurveda Practitioners Association. And when she graduates in June of 2023, she hopes to spread awareness about Ayurveda and help raise the collective consciousness for a healthy and blissful life. Bhavana has a deep personal connection to the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda. She has um, unfortunately lost her father-in-law to dementia and her mother to heart disease. So, She's been determined to have a, and understand human life and learn about holistic human healing techniques. Um, and she was, um, after moving to Houston in 2013, she embarked on a spiritual journey and uh, completed the Hatha Yoga training, meditation, and inner engineering, uh, inner engineering program from ISHA. In addition to her current master's degree study, Bhavana is also a program manager for the local nonprofit and volunteer organization, Unite and Inspire. And for the past couple of years, she's worked very closely with us here at the Arc of Fort Bend as well and helped coordinate um, many volunteers for our Teen Tween Social and Teen Pals Network programs. So we're so thankful for Bhavana and her partnership with uh, and Unite and Inspire for, for their collaboration as well. So welcome, Bhavana. I will turn the presentation over to you. Thank you so much, Carrie, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, um, Unite and Inspire, Rajni is here, our CEO and founder of the organization. And uh, it, it was a great learning experience for me uh, as a program manager. And I'm uh, really thankful to Rajni for being here today to encourage and support me. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey carry with uh, ARC as well and to bring in all the wonderful volunteering opportunities for the youth. And uh, it's been remarkable to see the uh, impact that this youth can have and uh, uh, so early in their life uh, engaging in community service and understanding that. And I mean, it's just not mere getting something on your to look good on your resume or college application but you can see the dedication and uh, it was wonderful uh, opportunity uh, and i think i learned a lot uh, working with uh, our content twin respite and uh, the teen pal program uh, it, it's been an amazing journey and i'm so grateful um, to arc and to you for giving me this opportunity and a platform to 
share my experiences and uh, my journey with Ayurveda. So um, let's get started. Can you see my uh, presentation carry on the screen? Okay, thank you. So um, Ayurveda is a ancient uh, traditional holistic healing from uh, Vedic India and it's more than 5000 uh, years old and it has stood the test of time. It is still practiced as a mainstream medicine across the world. And uh, when you look at uh, Ayurveda, uh, it is made up of, uh, it consists of these two words and Ayur uh, comes from the word called Ayush and it means life and Veda means knowledge or science. And Ayurveda, when you put together, it is science of life. So it is something which you live a way. It is a way of life. It is an art of living in that context. And Ayurveda also is a science uh, which is about longevity, health, well-being, and everything that a human life comprises of. So uh, let's divide the uh, health into uh, three aspects and Ayurveda uh, divides, looks at it as the spiritual health, physical health and mental health. Now, what do we mean by uh, spiritual health? Spiritual health is uh, our connection when we have, when we feel and we realize the peace in life. And it is when you are able to find hope and comfort in even the hardest of times. And the connection to spiritual health, it helps to support as an experience uh, to life in a complete holistic way. And spirituality means different things for uh, different people. It could be your thankful prayer with your family uh, during your meal times. It could mean the small forgiveness prayer that you do before going to bed. It could mean visiting a place of worship. You know, all those small connections which helps to enrich and enliven the aspect and acknowledgement of something higher than yourself. It's about acknowledging the uh, support of the universe to you in your life. And coming to the physical health, we all want to be fit and healthy to be able to do all that we intend to do with our life, right? Be it our responsibilities as parents or as children to our parents, and all that we, our dreams and our desires we can achieve only when we are sound and we have a, a good health good physical um, health mental health um, the you know in current times and situations it's all the more uh, relevant and this includes our emotional psychological and social well-being uh, mental health is about uh, how we think feel and act you know it's also our response to the triggers in the environment and uh, uh, it, it, it is how we relate to others and more so I believe that it's not for something for others to decide on our mental well-being. It's about the self-talk that we have with ourselves in our mind, you know. So uh, we are going to look at Ayurveda from these three uh, aspects, the spiritual health, physical and mental health. Now, why Ayurveda? When you look at WHO's definition of health, uh, it all over the years, the definition has gone through so many changes and uh, to, to include all the changes, environmental and social and economical changes that we are going through, the WHO has changed its definition of health and recent definition says that it is the uh, social, psychological and emotional well-being and uh, it's just not mere absence of disease or infirmity. So this is beautiful. This is where exactly Ayurveda is uh, coming about and it says that health is just not absence of disease. You know, it is feeling of well-being in your body in your mind, in your health and living a joyful and blissful life. And Ayurveda in that context is, is, is it focuses more on the health aspect of it. 
it is not talking about the disease ayurveda is all about health and when you take care of the health and you understand what is it to live a healthy life then you will not have disease it is taken care of by itself it is a natural outcome of being healthy so the focus of ayurveda is not on a disease it is to maintain the health of the healthy person it is very very personalized it depends on the constitution the physical and the mental constitution that i'm going to share in a couple of minutes with you all and even the treatment aspect of it the the therapy approach to uh, different things is uh, not based on a, a particular uh, disease or symptoms it is based on the individual to allow the body's self repair mechanism and achieve homeostasis which is equilibrium in the uh, body functions so as i said the purpose of all therapeutics is to enliven this inner intelligence of the body uh, that we uh, call and promote self repair mechanisms and we will see in a bit what i mean by that now this is uh, the doshas uh, it is the most fundamental uh, concept of ayurveda and it gives you uh, it 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 helps you to identify and give a recognition to your uniqueness Yes, it's our unique identity, and uh, these are three uh, doshas, which are vata, pitta, and kapha. For the sake of convenience, we will call it as V, P, and K. And as you see in your screen, um, V element is made up of air and space, and pitta, P, is made up of fire and water element, and kapha, K, is made up of earth and water element. now as per ayurveda the entire universe is made up of these five basic elements ether air fire water and earth now anything and everything whether it is animate inanimate any species every creation in the universe comprises of these five elements in different promotions uh, in different proportions now uh, each and every human being uh, is made up of these three aspects v p and k and one or more is predominant in the individual this v aspect as we know uh, is made up of air and space element and it is the principle of movement and transportation so anything uh, in your wherever there is a movement there is this vata v element now some examples would be the flow of air in our lungs or the blood circulating the thoughts within our mind and all movements that you see in your nature is the uh, vata element and the p element is the principle of transformation and assimilation and it is about the digestion of your food the assimilation of the food and not only the food that we ingest but it is the uh, our breathing the air that we ingest the assimilation of the thoughts that we have or any fresh idea so it is about the transformation digestion and assimilation of all that we ingest be it our food or be it our thoughts the k element is the earth and the water element and it is the principle of structure lubrication and cohesion and this gives the solidity to all the creation and it is our physical structure it is our musculoskeletal system anything that is structural part of it is made up of this k element interestingly uh, when you look at anything and everything around you you can see v p and k uh, playing a part over there and including our physiology including everything in the creation uh some example uh, let us see how this manifests in our human body now this is an example of how v element can manifest in our physiology the physical and the mental characteristics are when this there is a balance of this v element and i've just taken this picture of sandra bullock to Uh, help uh, everyone understand that uh, how what are some of the characteristics that this v element can bring in in our physiology so uh, when you have a predominance of v element in your physiology uh, it uh, they these people are slim energetic very creative 
quick to learn, quick to forget, flexible, kind-hearted, and very fast speech and walk. When you go to a party in a room, you will not miss these people. They are very enthusiastic, chirpy all around. And uh, the one on the right side that you see tendency or prone to is when the V element is goes towards an imbalance side. Now that can lead to forgetfulness, anxious, unstable mood, being sensitive to cold and light sleeping, insomnia, irregular appetite and eating patterns, and prone to digestive issues like gas, poor circulation, having cold hands and feet. Now, it doesn't mean that all the people who have predominance of this element will have these. It just means that they are more prone to it if we indulge in certain causative factors through our diet, lifestyle, or behavior. This is uh, some of the characteristic features of how you can um, see P element manifesting in the physiology and in the universe. And uh, Isla Fisher, I've just taken her picture, uh, a gorgeous picture of hers, sorry. So uh, when P element is predominant in your physiology, some of the features that you will see with these kind of personalities is they have athletic build, uh, they have healthy and lustrous uh, skin, and hair, they are very strong leaders, goal oriented, competitive, they are very tenacious, intelligent, and everything about them is very pur purposeful and self determination, they have a lot of self determination. And when they move towards an imbalanced state of this P element, they are prone to being impatient, prone to conflict because of their aggressive nature. They are always hungry, they just can't skip meals. And the hangry word came because of that. Uh, they have mood swings when they're hungry. They are prone to acne and inflammation and they're sensitive to hot temperature. K element, uh, these are some of the characteristics that it can manifest. Oprah is a beautiful example of a predominance of K element in our physiology. And they're very strong people having thin, um, thick boned, uh, strong musculature, strong bones and joints. They have a very healthy immune system. It is uh, one of the uh, uh, element that you would want more in you. They have dark, thick hair and uh, uh, mentally and emotionally, they are very stable, supportive and calm, caring, compassionate and empathetic individuals. And when you when this element gets to the imbalance stage, it can manifest as weight gain, slow metabolism, sluggishness, excessive sleeping, oversleeping, breathing issues, asthma, allergies, and uh, higher risk of heart disease, congestions and mucus uh, buildup, upper respiratory tract infections, and susceptibility to depression. Uh, so when you look at these three elements, you can see that how the air and the space element in the V and how the uh, fire and the water element with the P and how earth and water element in the K manifest uh, in each of the individual. And that gives us the unique body mind constitution that we are talking about. Now, the different combinations would be like somebody would be VP, somebody would be a combination of PV, somebody would be KV or PK or KP. These are the different permutations and combinations. Usually um, Ayurveda says that most of us around us are uh, having two of these predominant elements. When you, uh, to give my own example, I am a, a VP personality, you know? So uh, this is quite interesting and uh, it gives a, it is, a lot of people think that, oh my God, I'm, am I being judgmental? No, I think to look on the positive side, these qualities and these characteristics, understanding of how the predominance of these elements in your body, mind type helps you to understand yourself better. And that eventually helps you to make those choices when it comes to your diet, lifestyle and behavior, because Everything, as I said, including the food items, including everything has these qualities of VPK. Now, having understood how these qualities 
present itself. And as I said that everything material, whether it is a disease, uh, like let me give you an example. Let us take the example of anxiety. I had listed it under the uh, V element, right? Now let us look at the qualities of an anxiety. Anybody in the house, uh, you have, or your friend, or anyone uh, here who has an anxiety, would relate to this. That when you are anxious, what exactly happens to you? You know, there are racing thoughts. There is restlessness, breathlessness, and the heart rate increases. Right. So that is what we are talking about. That the air element increases. You feel spacious. You feel. Uh, there is a mental cloudiness in that and let us take an example of anger right anger is a p imbalance now when you are angry we are say that oh he is fuming he or she is fuming with anger so that is this heat that fire element which is increased over there and then somebody who is depressed how they what is that they are feeling they are feeling dull they are feeling heavy they are feeling um, suffocated, right? Their breathing becomes hard. They lose interest. So that is the element of that heaviness and the water element and all that when it is imbalanced, it gives you that kind of a feeling. So this is a beautiful example of how Ayurveda looks at anything and everything in terms of these qualities. and. Ayurveda recognizes this 10 pairs of opposites, the qualities that you can see in anything and everything, including the food choices that you're making. For example, um, heavy and light, hot and cold, oily and dry, dull and sharp, dense and liquid, soft and hard, stable, mobile, gross and subtle, sticky and clear, and smooth and rough. So when it comes to the therapeutic approach and how we can take care and have a balanced VPK through diet, lifestyle and behavior. In general, diet is very, very important because according to Ayurveda, it is not about how healthy your diet is. It is how well you are able to digest that food, assimilate that food and absorb the nutrition from the food. And the one that decides it is called the digestive fire, Agni in Sanskrit. And this digestive fire is also of three types, depending on the VPK element predominance. Now, for example, when the V element is predominant, that digestive fire will be more of irregular pattern. You will have, that individual will have a variable hunger and digestion. When P element is predominant in your digestive fire, it is like a hot, sharp fire over there. And that will have a quality where you have sharp hunger and digestion. They can have large capacity of food. And at the same time, they cannot skip meals. When it comes to the K type of digestion, it is a dull and a weak digestion. It will seem like the food is staying in your system for a lot of amount of time you are not able to digest and you will also feel a little bit of heaviness and sluggishness when you are not able to digest your food they don't feel hungry they can easily skip their meals so anything that you are eating you have to eat as per your digestive capacity so there are dietary rules ayurveda has clear guidance of guidelines and how to consume the food what one should be eating and the more you eat as per your the unique body mind type that we are talking about the more balanced will be the digestion another important aspect of the digestion here is the product of the digestion the nutritive essence that we are talking about is what is the food for the entire body tissues and it is that it is the essence, it is the nutrition from the food that is giving you a healthy body and mind. And you will naturally feel good when you are able to digest your food, your thoughts and everything that you are ingesting through your senses. 
so some simple recommendations for diet because it's a huge topic and as i said it will not be uh, possible uh, we need a separate session for it but some simple things that you can do is favoring warm fresh cooked meals and using these mild spices like turmeric cumin coriander and fennel in general across the board with whatever body type you are it would be good to avoid dry cold processed leftovers and frozen foods and drinks the reason for this is this is a reason for we being getting imbalance in the first place because you see we is made up of the air and the space element and dry cold processed frozen foods and drinks increases that we element and it is the first one to go out of balance and it has the capability to, because it is the one that moves everything in the system and it is about transportation it can easily disturb the p and the k uh, elements and the bioenergies inside of you sipping warm water throughout the day it is something which is recommended for everyone what it does is it keeps the channels clear in your body now according to ayurveda the entire human physiology is nothing but a huge network you can imagine the uh, network in a traffic and the flyovers and the connectivity there is one blockage anywhere a traffic jam and for miles you can feel that block and the impact right everything the flow stops and when the flow stops it can disturb the flow of energy the flow of nutrients the flow of blood anything and everything so that is one thing you don't want you want all the channels in your body all the arteries and everything to be clear and sipping warm water keeps the flow doesn't allow the material to clog anywhere uh, in your system coming to the routine and di uh, lifestyle ayurveda has clear guidelines and how our day should look at and it is called dinacharya and this guidelines right from the time of waking up to the time you go to bed is what is called an art of living so you are not doing anything just one fine day waking up trying to correct your body and the system ayurveda believes that a disease doesn't happen manifest in a single day and health also doesn't in that way happen on one single day it is what you do on everyday basis so in general the routine that is recommended and all these are coming from the goal of keeping the v p and k element in balance so ayurveda recommends waking up at 6 am going to bed by 10 pm and then um, elimination your bowel movement should happen first thing in the morning then you do some uh, exercise and then it has also uh, it recommends for cleaning up all the pores in our body like how you do a brushing and oil gargling tongue scraping doing some yoga asanas doing some meditation taking bath having a good breakfast and then you go on with your work so everything has having a clear guidelines according to ayurveda when it comes to the meal times ayurveda recommends that lunch should be your main meal and the reason is that as i said about the vpk ayurveda has its own understanding of the biological clock and how these elements are present for example uh, the v element uh, is present from um, 2 to 6 a.m. and p.m. The P element is 6 to 10. Uh, sorry, the uh, P element is 10 to 2 a.m. and p.m. And the K element is 6 to 10 a.m. and p.m. So in the afternoon, 10 to 2, uh, when the sun is at the peak, is when the P element is the strongest. That means your digestive fire is the strongest. And hence, the main meal of the day should be your lunch. And more importantly, when you are having your lunch or any meal of the day, it is very important that you sit in a settled environment. Again, the settled environment guarantees the balance of the V element. So that is how all these elements play a role 
and you think about an organ system you think about eating you think about sleeping anything and everything is governed by this vpk element and it's it's very very fascinating to uh, have an understanding of that it's quite empowering to understand uh, how everything is so well organized and a system which is running in uh, in our physiology incorporate daily body massage and tongue scraping i have already covered about tongue scraping and daily body massage is something which ayurveda recommends and uh, this is to keep the balance of the v element and also uh, it helps to uh, moisturize your body and skin and it also acts as everyday detoxification like how every day you work out or you open up your pores and uh, all the toxins come out these body massages also helps to bring out all the toxins together and then they can be eliminated through the bowel movement or through urination so daily body massages another recommendation in your routine and lifestyle coming to the behavior uh, behavior is something very closely related to the uh, spiritual health aspect of it and it is about being positive and looking at everything with that positive mindset the top uh, recommendation here would be practicing positive thought speech and action avoiding excessive indulgence in caffeine alcohol or artificial stimulating uh, substances and why this is is because uh, there is a feedback loop that is happening in your body and every cell is communicating to any other cell and anything that you give artificial stimulants from outside it can temporarily serve the purpose but over a period of time it kinds of steals away the intelligence and it disturbs the feedback loop in your body system practicing yoga and meditation regularly we have many different kinds of uh, fitness that an individual looks in but yoga comes from very traditional system and it is a coordination of the body and the mind that we are talking about it is not a physical exercise just for your physical fitness it brings in the synchronicity synchronicity in your body and mind system and gentle yoga can be performed right from five years of age till the end of your life you can perform this yoga and it helps in keeping the uh, body and mind in complete coordination meditation um, we will talk more about it but meditation in simple words is being with yourself and connecting to the core of who you are connecting with the consciousness aspect of yours spending some me time uh, with yourself and understanding and acknowledging the presence and the gift that we have been given in this human life we will talk more about it as we uh, move on this this is the meditation that i have learned two years back as a part of my uh, program of uh, ayurveda and uh, it's been a magical thing in my life i can't even think of not doing this meditation uh, any day without uh, meditation uh, transcendental meditation is uh, absolutely effortless and evidence-based and uh, guaranteed uh, um, transcendence uh, and it's an effortless technique. It is taught one-to-one -one, and when you look at what it can do for you, it is uh, 20 minutes, you just sit yourself 20 minutes with a mantra and it's an effortless technique and here here we have different kinds of meditation we have mindfulness uh, techniques we have different techniques where we focus on a word or a mantra and when transcendental meditation uh, has when you see the brain waves the eeg you can see the amount of coherence that you have it is called alpha brain activity and some other mindfulness technique have a theta and a beta level. What it does is it from the, uh, you can consider an ocean and the uh, surface thoughts and waves that are there on the surface level. And as you settle down, as you settle down 
uh, into your meditation as you go deep into there is the stillness and calmness of the ocean and this technique helps you to settle down to that level of mental reducing the activity and the outside chatter of your mind and takes you to that level of consciousness where purity and the entire intelligence is there and when you settle down you it is as good as having a deep restful sleep and it enlivens the entire body and mind it rejuvenates your body and mind and enlivens the uh, self repair mechanisms of your body there are a lot of research which has been done on transcendental meditation american heart uh, society has prescribed transcendental meditation and it has been uh, there are number of research uh, showing its positive effect on children uh, with autism and adhd a dramatic reduction in stress anxiety depression and ptsd and it reduces blood pressure and heart attacks and uh, especially uh, uh, it its impact on uh, physiology is mind blowing coming to the ayurveda uh, how does ayurveda approach all this as i said in the beginning it is all about bringing these elements in balance we are trying to balance the vpk so that uh, a balanced uh, v can perform the function of enthusiasm inhalation and exhalation movement and a balanced p can have a good uh, sight digestion your heat thirst softness luster cheerfulness and intellect and we can have a balanced k which will help us with the uh, binding firmness and uh, strength forbearance restraint so ayurveda multimodality approaches has many things panchakarma is uh, one of the uh, techniques which has got five uh, uh, actions in it and it uses different herbal formulations where we have different uh, plant uh, use of different plants and herbs ayurveda uses all aspects of plants plants are considered having the same consciousness as us and they have a synergistic effect when you use a drug or uh, this thing that is the concentrated form of it and hence uh it has got some side effects to it but when we consume uh, a plant uh, in its form as a bark or a flower or a, in terms of a tea uh, it has the ability to synergistically produce effects and hence uh, ayurveda herbal uh, formulations doesn't have any side effects abhyanga as i told you it helps to channelize the uh, entire toxins and uh, uh bring in all that to one place and helps in smooth uh, elimination and also keep your body uh, subtle and smooth um oleation every day abhyanga uh, oleation is with an oil and every uh, every uh, body type has an oil recommended like for example for a v element where a air and space dominance sesame oil is uh, recommended for a pea oil where there is excessive heat in the body and they are prone to inflammation coconut oil or olive oil is recommended and for a k type uh, to invigorate and uh, to uh, increase the active to increase the fire element and to remove the sluggishness mustard oil is uh, recommended so there are these different kinds of recommendations whatever you are using is to balance the vpk element steam therapy we all know the benefits of sauna ayurveda also has a similar version where uh, after the oleation uh, we introduce the uh, steam tent and that helps to open up uh, the pores and helps in the deep penetration of this oils into the tissue level and then uh, basti is a kind of medicated anima treatment and uh, according to ayurveda there are these vpk has different seats in our body like for example the p element is in the stomach and the duodenum it's that's the main seat of p and the main seat of k is in the chest and the main seat of v is in the colon for example so if you have any imbalance in your v 
and that is element has got aggravated, then they introduce uh, medical animas and then they remove the excess of the element through that portal. If you have excess of P, where it has gone to the extent of aggravating and disseminating and manifesting in your tissues and where a proper chronic disease has manifested in your physiology, then we bring in through all these techniques of oleation and steaming, bringing the entire aggravated P back to the stomach and then we do purgation to bring it in balance. Similarly, when you have a lot of K element, which has got accumulated and aggravated, we, uh, we use uh, MSS, uh, though it is not used in the United States, but we uh, back in India and other places where authentic Panchakarma is practiced, we do that to remove the excess of uh, K that has got accumulated over there. Gem therapy, crystal healing has been used by multiple uh, uh, healing, um, uh, multiple uh, alternate uh, healing practices practiced in Chinese medicine. In Ayurveda as well, we have gem therapy and crystal therapy. Again, it is exposing to the qualities of the gem and uh, crystal healing where these uh, elements also have those properties of healing properties and uh, say, for example, a crystal healing uh, helps in cooling uh, and balancing. Aromatherapy, essential oils, now everyone is using aromatherapy. Uh, Ayurveda also uses aromatherapy. And the, as I told, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, different plants and different products and its extracts like eucalyptus, they have a very unique property. And depending on the, uh, depending on the imbalance that you have, there are different uh, recommendations of essential oil. For example, lavender is used to balance uh, V, rose is used to balance P. So like that, there are a number of aroma oils and it, it works wonderfully well to invigorate and enliven uh, our senses. So aroma, so, to, so Ayurveda approaches the entire holistic body and it uses all these multimodalities to bring balance in your VPK system. Vedic vibration technology, music and mantra is a huge thing that we use. And a lot of uh, Indians will vouch for it that how listening to a chanting, listening to those vibrations uh, helps to soothe the mind and create those kind of vibrations in our uh, physiology how a chanting of mantra. So every word, and it comes from the understanding of the Sanskrit language. It is also called the mother of all languages. And it is, uh, it is, a, it is, in a, it is not just a mere uh, uh, combination of words. Sanskrit is actually a knowledge of a sound and a vibration. Every word means something and it creates certain vibration. Those uh, of uh, us who would have uh, been to a yoga studio and as a part of that, if they would have done a simple Om chanting, would know the kind of vibrations that can uh, using or chanting some of these uh, mantras can bring in your physiology. Pulse diagnosis is a very unique feature of Ayurveda and it is a little different than the pulse diagnosis that is done and practiced in modern medicine. And in these pulse diagnosis, uh, it is um, early detection of imbalances uh, is the key feature of this. Now, according to Ayurveda, there are uh, six stages of disease. And when we go through an X-ray or a blood work, it is only later when the signs and symptoms have manifested in our body that we come to know that we are having a disease or an imbalance or it's going. But in Ayurveda, just by pulse diagnosis, uh, the vibrations and any imbalance can be felt. There are different layers in the uh, pulse diagnosis and an Ayurvedic practitioner is trained to catch these imbalances early and so that they can recommend you diet, lifestyle and behavior and recommend any of these multimodality therapies to bring back the balance in the VPK system. Vedic architecture, um, is a very interesting uh, science and it has to do with 
how the buildings are placed, how, how certain things are located to enhance that particular element. For example, it recommends where the cooking should be done in the home, where you should have altar in your home, in which direction your bed should be facing, how should be uh, the uh, entrance to your house be facing to which direction. And so this makes use of all the aspects that can help promote health and well-being uh, in our system, in our physiology, in our life. So Ayurveda's approach to life, as I said, Ayurveda is an art of living. It is not something you do when you fall sick. It is on everyday basis. It is building a lifetime of healthy habits. And Ayurveda believes in moderation of anything, uh, moderation in everything. You don't have to give up on anything in life. Once you understand your unique body mind constitution and you know your true self and you practice all the things then health is guaranteed. It is a natural outcome of who you are. And according to Ayurveda, it doesn't see disease. When we, when we hear about a cardiovascular disease or a musculoskeletal or a rheumatoid arthritis, the, the, the first thing which happens is we get scared, fear comes, anxiousness comes, and we are stressed. But with Ayurveda, we can it, it is about it, it doesn't talk about the disease everything is about balance and imbalance and the it is like how you have a gadget and how you have an app and then you what do you do the first thing you read its user manual that helps you to know how to use that gadget or a furniture similarly ayurveda is a user manual to us to human beings because it completely understands our life from the start to the end and it gives us all these tools to understand ourselves better so that we can make the right choices in our diet lifestyle and behavior and experience a blissful and healthy life and be able to do all that we want to do in all aspects of our life so there is a beautiful uh, shloka in uh, uh, sanskrit it says sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santo niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu makashi dukha bhagavet and which means that may all be prosperous and happy may all be free from illness may all see what is auspicious and may no one suffer so this is what ayurveda's approach to life is and I had a, a interesting uh, thing that I came across today morning, which I wanted to uh, share. Um, and it it was about our approach to uh, life and a, a spiritual master had shared this. And he said that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light not our darkness that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So this is what I wanted to share with you all. And uh, I would be more than happy to take in any questions at this point. And thank you so much for uh, listening to me today. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much, Vivana. What a, what a wealth of information. My, um... I was trying to just take some notes down. I'm so glad you're going to be sharing the slides with us. And I will email the slides out to everybody who um, everybody who registered, whether they were able to, to log on today or not, because um, I feel like it's very helpful, especially one of your um, the slides where you have 
some of the the initial things that you can do, you know, from health and the, your your attitude and and uh, your routine, daily routine. Um, and that was kind of one of my questions. And, and please, anybody who has a question, you can feel free to either type it in the chat or if you'd like to unmute and ask Ivana yourself, um, you can do that as well. But so specifically, you know, with the ARP, we're always um, you know, kind of interested in how this might impact and touch people with um, you know, various intellectual and developmental disabilities. And then for our parents that are on, that are, that are wondering, how do I maybe um, start or kind of step into some of these strategies that you might um, suggest for you know, my son or daughter or a, a loved one that I know that has um, autism or Down syndrome or ADHD or you know, some of these um, uh, you know, di different aspects uh, of their being. So is there, for, for different people how and how to maybe step into it, is there a particular recommendation you have or some suggestions that you have for some strategies on how to kind of slowly step into this uh, life and, and holistic appreciation for your body and, and wellness? Yeah. So uh, when you look at this um, ADHD or autism or any of that, the first thing is to understand is it is uh, an imbalance of what we call the V element the air and the space element. So um, there is a lot of research, like I said, Transcendental Meditation, uh, tm.org is a beautiful site to visit. And uh, they have locations across the world. It's a huge organization and uh, that meditation is start. And uh, there, there are a lot of research which was done in Chicago schools and how it has helped these kids cope up with that yoga and pranayam, any Ayurvedic practitioner that you get in touch with, I would be more than uh, happy to uh, support uh, any parent who is willing to work with this. As I said, it is, uh, you need to work with a practitioner and uh, work on this multimodality approach that we are talking about. Yoga and pranayama, pranayama, the breathing technique is a huge, huge thing to calm down and get the grounding uh, happen with these kids. And a beautiful example of uh, uh, pranayama, the breath work that I'm talking about is that Ayurveda uh, doesn't count the lifespan in terms of number of years. It is in terms of number of breaths. Now, a beautiful example is that of a tortoise. A tortoise lives for 400 years. And the reason is the secret is it breathes only three to four breaths per minute while a dog on the other side has a breathing rate of 80 to 100 beats per minute. It takes 80 to 100 breaths per minute and hence it lives for 15 to 20 to 25 years. So it's all in the breath. The more deep breath, the more slower breath you will take, the lifespan will be that much more. So for, for in Ayurveda's understanding, it is just not the oxygen that you are taking in. It's not the exchange of gases that is happening in your respiratory system. It is much more than that. That process of taking in the breath of the consciousness and making it one within ourselves, it's called prana. It is the life force. It is the vital force. It is a very thing, you know, we can live without food. We can live without water, but we can live only a couple of minutes without our breath. So the pranayama, prana is the life force and yama is stretching. So it is how much more deeper and slower you are breathing. It is, and it is a great tool. It is a great stress buster. Like how when you are anxious, your heart rate increases, right? So when you have a cause and an effect, if anxiety is the cause and the effect is your increased respiration rate or a heart rate, the vice versa should also be true. I should be able to uh, get an emotion of my desire when I'm doing a breath work. Hence, even if you see that when in the delivery room, on the, when a woman is uh, in a labor, you know, what do we say? <sighs> just relax, just relax. So we are trying to uh, get relaxation the, by the very way that we breathe in. So pranayama is a great, great tool uh, for um, the children uh, with special need. And there has been research 
There are a lot of research papers which you will see on the site when you go to tm.org. Dr. Tony Nader is a Harvard uh, doctor and an MD, and uh, he is uh, the um, uh, CEO and founder of that organization called tm.org, the Transcendental Meditation that I'm talking about. It is considered as the fourth state of consciousness. It is a state of consciousness be beyond your uh, waking, dreaming, and sleeping state. You know, we have certain awareness and this is about the awareness of who we are. It is about the physiology and the mind completely in that subtler level. It's a complete realm by itself and where the entire knowledge, the entire intelligence, it is like accessing our DNA. You know, it is like making those changes from there and bringing in a balance. So, uh, the first thing would be to uh, know that what is your dosha type, whether you are VP, your PK and all that. And once you do that, and depending on the particular signs and symptoms that these kids might be having, an Ayurvedic practitioner can have a proper plan for that. Usually with these kids, because there is some aspect of the communication uh, that is the feedback loop that has got disturbed in their uh, mental uh, faculty, uh, there is an eventual uh, disturbance in the uh, physiology, you know, in their gastrointestinal system. Probably somebody is having some digestive imbalances. So an Ayurvedic practitioner would evaluate completely and then give you a proper plan. As I said, Ayurveda is very, very personalized. It, you cannot generalize anything in Ayurveda. So, but it's quite empowering because the, the moment you understand these qualities and the moment you understand everything in terms of this it's you you know everything about it how to deal with it and the first thing is you are not scared anymore these big names these diseases you know they are just mere imbalances which have gone to different stages and ayurveda has at different stage and most of them are reversible with pulse diagnosis and all that we see every day when we are practicing in our clinics that most of them are reversible and the one which has got manifested, which has become chronic, there is a management so that, you know, you don't worsen the situation. And you don't have to feel uh, debilitated in any ways. There is no hindrance. You can live your life still with beautifully uh, doing all that you want to do. So that is the beauty of Ayurveda. Very good. We do have a question. Uh, Padma has uh, in the chat box, First of all, said wonderful presentation. Thank you for this. And the question is whether uh, the VPK changes according to age. And, and in that case, um, how can we define or generalize the qualities of a person based on that, if uh, VPK and the age? Thank you so much for that question. Um, as I said, it's so huge wisdom that it is not possible for me to bring everything concisely so i'm glad that all these questions are being asked which helps me talk a little bit more about uh ayurveda's perspective so definitely yes as i said this vpk is um uh, is everywhere during the day as i said there are different timings when these elements are predominant in the nature and uh in our as we age also from the birth to the end of our um, so-called physical uh, realm life um, vpk has it like for example the first 15 years of the age uh, from 0 to 15 is the k period where the structure is happening where all the structural uh, growth is happening right and then you have from up to uh, 15 to 60 years of age is the p time when the youth is at the peak, you have that fire in you, you know, your intelligence is at the peak. And uh, so that uh, that predominance and the sharpness of the intellect and everything is there. So that is the P phase of life. And then 60 and above is the V phase of life where the air and the space element in it. And there is so you see arthritis and all these elements with the dry joints, the degeneration the air and the space element, there is dryness in the skin, old people feel that the wrinkle, all that comes in. So these elements are playing anywhere, everywhere, every aspect of your life. So and but the one that I was talking about the balanced VPK is something which is inherent in you that doesn't change throughout your life. It is your body mind constitution is it's your blueprint. 
it's the DNA that you are born with for this lifetime. That doesn't change. It is the imbalance. It is these imbalance that are manifested. And every time you do a corrective measure, you know, you just start sleeping by 10, 10, 30, your every that body will come back to balance. And we see that we see that in young girls. Uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just using an example. Uh, we see a lot of these young girls coming now with uh, PCOS, PCOD, you know, and it all stems from not taking care of their menstrual health. Now, in the Ayurveda's understanding of menstrual health is there is an aspect of V, which is the which uh, facilitates the downward movement of the menstrual blood. Okay, and when because these kids are so hyperactive in their life, you know they don't eat well, they don't go to bed on time. So there is the activity, and this activity, this overactivity, disturbs the V element. And when it disturbs the V element, the cycle is either too excessive bleeding or scanty bleeding. It disturbs the flow. As I said, V is about transportation and movement. It disturbs that. And so if in that particular age, in that particular thing, if that person is having a predominance of V element in their personality, in their body mind constitution, then those are the kids who will face the imbalance earlier. So VPK is your inherent quality, it's your blueprint that doesn't change your entire life. It is the imbalance that changes. I, I hope I have answered that question. Good, yeah, well, it, there's just there's so much to it, just like you said, I mean, I think we could be here. Um, and there's just so many aspects and because it's so personalized and individualized. Um, so it's good to know. And I saw that you had in uh, your final slide has a way to contact you if, you, if anybody has questions um, and going forward. So I just want to thank you for coming and sharing this information with us, Vivana. It's a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a humble attempt and I hope, uh, um, you know, we get to see many more of these and uh, share because Ayurveda has so much to offer. I hope everyone will go and explore more about it. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you, Kerry, for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you, God bless. Yeah.